All right, welcome back to the Red Sox podcast that has no name, America's most beloved podcast, the most downloaded Red Sox podcast on the internet. Uh, Palite is drinking. He, this is the first podcast that he's missed due to alcohol, which, by the way, what is this, Jake? Episode five? Episode five. Episode five? All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, he, he made it four without having to miss a podcast due to alcohol consumption. Um, we got Tyler. We got Pete. You just heard Jake. Uh, I'm assuming if you're listening to this podcast, you probably watched that Toronto Blue Jays series, but you're probably not here to to hear about that Toronto Blue Jays series. You probably want to hear about the Don Arcillo situation. And, and I don't blame you. That's, it's a juicy story. It was the story of the series in a, in a series in which the Red Sox lost two out of three to the Toronto Blue Jays. I feel like, you know, we'll obviously get into the actual series and talk baseball. Uh, I felt like they had a chance to do exactly what I said they were going to do. I said two out of three, and I liked the the bookend. I liked I liked them winning the opener, and I liked them winning the finale. And if they sure didn't come close to doing that, um, but again, we'll get to that. We got to talk about this Don Arcillo situation first. Which, by the way, I'll say this: uh, I because people were freaking out at me last night. Being like, you're this is on you. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, this is on you. You're the you're the voice of the fucking Red Sox fan base. You gotta fucking call out the Red Sox and hold them accountable. And your buddy, Sam Kennedy, you gotta fucking yell at him and all these other people at the Red Sox, but you're afraid to lose your so-called access. That's and right, like, you piece of shit coward. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how the fuck did I get dragged into this? I'm just I, I, by the way, I was at the game. Uh, the Jerry Remy ceremony wasn't going to miss it. I know Pete didn't give a shit about it. That's why he didn't go. He instead went on Thursday. Shame um, on you, Pete. Yeah, that was really low class of you. Low class. Um, but I went. It was actually the uh, the date of uh, Garen Austin. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just... Uh, a little, little date night. <laughs> Garen. Um, it's actually really cool. The fucking is the first time I think any of them have congregated the Red Sox sideline reporters. That was very it's cool. Like, yeah. I was like, I was in like a little sweet thing with Garen Austin, Jenny Dell, Heidi Watney, Tina Servacio. Uh, who am I missing? Gary Streisky was in there, albeit he's he's a guy. Uh, Eric. I, I was Eric Don't Freed. sell him short. Eric Don't Freed. sell him short. Yeah, he's he's attractive. He's Please. attractive. Please. He's attractive. Yeah. Who's attractive? Sorry. Gary Streisky. Oh, Gary Streisky, absolute hunk of meat. Yeah, mm-hmm. he is. Mm-hmm. He is. Uh, so I just want to come clean about something. Mm-hmm. I, I want to mm-hmm. confess. Mm-hmm. We're listening. Um, so I was the only person in the Nesson suite who was not involved in the pregame ceremony. So I got there a little bit early and, you know, said hi to everyone. And then they were like, all right, we'll be right back because they all have to go down on the field for the pregame ceremony. All I'm saying is if you want to place the blame on me, you're wrong. Uh, I ate all of the lobster rolls. And like, I mean, if you're going to like leave me alone with it, like I first of all, if you're in a suite with Nesson, you're assuming, okay, like you, they're just going to keep it. It's all you can eat. They're going to replenish it. I didn't think like, okay, we got like a plate of lobster rolls and that's it for the rest of the night. So hand up. Me. I, yeah. I mean, like, first of all, like that's, that's on you. That's on you. Nesson loves to cut costs. Yeah, I'm sure maybe the they, first time. No, no refills, bitch. They could have gotten more. They could have gotten more, but hey. I like lobster. That's that's a lesson learned the hard way. Nesson. Number two, uh, Tina Servacio has not aged a fucking day. I haven't seen her in person since 2007 when I looked like a skinny meth addict in the Red Sox Nation presidential debate, which was in September of 2007, uh, moderated by Tim Russert, RIP. And uh, who else was there? Fucking that was the day that I met Jerry Remy. That was the day that I met him. Wait, um, what? 
I think they said like every Red Sox sideline reporter, uh, Nesson sideline reporter ever was there. Hazel was, May was, was not. That's there. what I was just. Gonna that's ask. what bothered me. Yeah, that was like just the start that. for me. Yeah. So I was sitting she there. She was covering for someone because she covers the Blue Jays, but I think like she had to be back in Canada. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. She was. I think she was supposed to be there. Um, but she was not. That would All be right, cool. Well, then let's not say every fucking Nesson sideline reporter ever w- and besmirch the name or Hazel May Erasure. Hazel May was awesome. Hazel May was was great. Um, but I feel like she's she was wasn't she with was she with the Maple Leafs and then the Red Sox and then the Blue Jays? Like I know that she belongs to Canada first. Yeah, but, we borrowed her from Canada and gave her back. Well, that's fine. I also think that she was there for the launch of MLB Network. I think when they launched MLB Network, she, that's where she went too. Mm-hmm. She was the first Steve Pierce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just saying, um, never forget. Love Steve Pierce. So they start to do the ceremony, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like waiting for it. And, I'm, and people were like, "Wait, you were watching the ceremony the whole time, and you were thinking about Don, not Jerry." And I'm like, "Of course, I'm fucking thinking about Jerry," but like you're kind of waiting for that moment of, all right, if he's not here, which I think I would have known that he was going to be there, then they must be showing a video. And I'm looking, and Sean McDonough comes out. Great speech, by the way. And then uh, they, they call in the closer, TC. He did an awesome job. And then they put a ball on it. And I'm like looking at the clock, and I'm like, all right, well, it's like 7.08, 7.09. And I was like, well, if they're going to do something with Don, it's got to be... It's going to be right now. And then it just doesn't happen. And then it's like, play ball. I'm like, well, what the fuck? And I don't know. Like, I I didn't want to take away from the moment and tweet that right after the ceremony. Like, be like, where the fuck is Don? It's like, well, it's not about Don. It's about Jerry. Like, I feel like I would have gotten crushed if I had tweeted about it. Um, But I was getting text messages, like, from friends, family, being like, what the fuck? Where's, Where's Don? What do you know about this? I'm like, I don't know shit. I don't know anything about this. I know you were there, Jared. Did you see Chad Finn's tweet like right as it started happening, the pregame ceremony? No. So he kind of tipped it off. He posted something and it was, you know, it wasn't super clear, but he was like, basically keep an eye out if there's anything Don or Silo related. Uh, You know, I'm paraphrasing here. And that Hmm. was the first thing that kind of tipped me off. And then everyone watched it. They saw the highlights, you know, some of the throwback clips, of course, because we know how many years and. You know, that's the main duo we always think of when we think of Remy. Um, and that was it. Nothing happened after that. And then obviously Orsillo dropped it like a minute after the Red Sox game ended. So it looked like it was starting to circle right before the game. It's just everyone was kind of seeing or waiting how it was going to come out. Yeah. And it was just a shit night. <laughs> uh, the game sucked. There was really no action. Uh, JD got hurt. Fucking Trevor Story got smoked in the head. Gamer, savage. He did stay in the game. He ultimately came out, but he did stay. He did take his base, and then Cora gets COVID. It was it was a shit night. Um, and then Don Arcillo sends out the tweet, and I will I will read you what he said because uh, the context is is important for all of this. Uh, Don Arcillo said, "I was offered the opportunity to do a video message for my friend and former partner Jerry Remy for tonight's ceremony at Fenway Park. Sadly, I was notified by the Red Sox and Nesson that my video would no longer be needed for tonight's ceremony. Here is my message." And then he included what he would have said in his video. Um, so throughout the night, uh, we essentially are outraged that like it's it's like why the fuck <laughs> why the fuck have you done this again to Don Orsillo it makes no sense uh the, the main point about people saying wouldn't Jerry want Don to be included in this ceremony of course he would uh i i thought it was odd that they included video parts of Don Orsillo in the tribute so it wasn't like he was completely erased from the ceremony I was just I was looking up at the video board and waiting for a video message to appear from Don. It just seemed like pretty obvious that that was the move. Um, so when it didn't happen and Don sends out this tweet, that's when Red Sox fans are going absolutely fucking ballistic because on the surface, it looks like the Red Sox purposefully excluded Don from from the ceremony. Um, 
I so I, I I tried to talk to both sides. I tried to gather all the information. Um, you know, I I, I talked to Don. I talked to Don last night. Um, I also talked to people involved with the ceremony last night, and from so I'll read you what what Pam Ken's tweet says, uh, and then I'll kind of just piece together what I heard from the Red Sox side of things, and then we can make a determination on what the fuck really happened. So Pam tweeted, "I loved Jerry. Mer- I loved Jerry Remy. We all did." All we cared about leading into last night was making this ceremony a heartfelt and loving tribute to him, something his family could be proud of, something that captured who he was and what he meant to Red Sox fans everywhere. And in that planning, the very first phone call that we made uh, was to invite Don Orsillo to attend. The first phone call. Because you do not you do not recognize the career of Jerry Remy without Don Orsillo. Unfortunately, he didn't come. As the ceremony was coming together and the pieces were falling into place, We thought video messages might not fit. In retrospect, maybe we should have had him record something to see where it could fall. As time ran out, we did not ask for him. We did not ask him for a video and he didn't record or send one. There was never any intent to leave him out of our tribute. When I spoke with him, I thought he knew that. Perhaps I did not make that clear. I still thought we pulled together an amazing group of people who span his playing career and broadcast career. I was so proud of what we did, and I know that Rem would have loved it too. So, all of that being said, um, I think where I arrived, and I know that in the podcast, in the sports media world, you got to have a fucking strong take and you got to land firm on something and stick to your guns. I think it's, it's fair to say that there's a mutual fault here but it's not 50-50 blame, if that makes sense. So I'll elaborate. Was Don invited? Yes. Yes, he was. Could he have been there? Yes, he could have been. Do I blame Don for not going? No, I don't. You have to remember, and this podcast was almost born, or excuse me, section 10 was, this is a different podcast. This is America's most beloved podcast. It's the no name Red Sox podcast, but we can't say the name Red Sox. Uh, Section 10 was born on uh, that Don Arcillo controversy. That was our first season. Alan Craig Studios, Pete's Basement. That's where it was born. And that controversy still lingers today. And I'm sorry, but every time that you turn on a Red Sox broadcast over like before Jerry's passing, when Jerry was with anyone that wasn't Don, you would be reminded that it, that should be Don. <laughs> like that, I'm sorry, but like you know, you could be great too. But if if you're not Don, it's going to be glaring. It's not. It's going. It's going to stand out. Um, so those feelings with the fans are still fresh, six, seven years later, whatever it is. Uh, and Don still very much cares that. He was essentially run out of town for no fucking reason. So if I'm done, do I want to come back to Fenway and be around the people that kicked me out of my ass for no fucking reason? Because it wasn't it wasn't just one person that was responsible for that. It was multiple people who had a hand in that. Would I want to come back and and be around those people? Probably not. I think I would have reservations about being around those people. Uh, I'm sure he's still has very bitter feelings towards Nesson. And I get it. So yeah, it's like, could have, could, did, was Don invited? Yes. Could he have been there if he wanted to be? Yes. But do I blame him for not going? No, I don't. On the Red Sox side of things to say like, okay, we had all these people fly out and we put this ceremony together with all these sideline reporters. Um, (laughs) <laughs> Rochi and Butch Stearns, like they, they had like a bunch of, I love Rochi. He's fucking amazing. Um, they had all these people come out there and it, and, and Sean McDonough had a great speech and TC had a great speech at the end there. And I think the Red Sox, like the, the person that I talked to at the Red Sox was like, well, we had all these people here in person and we just felt like, uh, like a video would have been out of place. And I was like, I'm just going to let you know on this phone call, Here's what I'm going to say. Like, I let them know. 
that's bullshit. <laughs> I was like, you played uh, a video. Tri- like if it'd be one thing if you didn't have a video tribute, how hard would it have been after all those clips? How crazy would the people who have been there gone if it was in a message from Don Orsillo? Yeah, right. And it was 30 Especially. seconds, a minute, whatever it would have been. They would have gone nuts. And Jared, I think it all goes back to, you know, the work you guys put in at that time when, you know, Don had his final goodbye with everyone. They did not want to have another situation where Fenway was erupting, basically showing their love to Don Orsillo on that platform, because that would have been one of the main takeaways from that night. Sure. I I just think like the it, it makes me mad that that they didn't include him. But I think that it might make me more mad the way that they responded to it. Like, because it proved they, because everything. They, they were just like, no, it was like they they knew that they fucked up and they saw the backlash and they were like, well, we tried. No, you fucking didn't try. Uh, you you may have invited the or extended the invitation in person, which is nice. Good for you. But once once he says that he's not coming, you find a fucking way to get him involved. Uh, and the you know, the video tribute thing saying like uh, we didn't think that it would have a place in the ceremony. You fucking it, make it have a place. And it is not that hard. You transition from one of the clips with Don and Jerry and you go straight into a video message. And that is not out of place at all. So like to put it on Don's lap that like, oh, well, he, he's not here. So that's like his that's his deal. That is that's bullshit. That and is it, totally bullshit. It proves exactly why Don in this situation, Jared, you saying like why he wouldn't have wanted to come in person. Well, when something like this happens and the first thing they do is shit on you and they try to throw it all on your name again. Come and, on. It, it hasn't changed one bit in the year since he's been gone. And the husband of the SVP uh, being like, nice to see you uh, taking away from from Jerry's night. And it's like, oh, you, you motherfucker. Are you kidding me? Uh, it, it's just it just like seemed like it was all very petty and very immature. And like that takes away from Jerry's night more than anything. Uh, and, you know, I, I do understand, you know, why Don wouldn't want to come back. And but I do think that like. There is, you know, it's it's Jerry's night. So you put aside that that stuff if you can. But at the same time, Don has responsibilities. He's got his job. And so, like, I can understand it if, if that was his reason why he didn't want to come. Like, he's got his job to do. And that's his first priority at this point. Uh, the Padres to, wouldn't have given a fuck, though. No, I it. understand that. I understand that. And, like, you know, I, I think that if if. Uh, you know, everything had been smoothed over. Don probably would have came. But it's just it's just absolute bullshit to say, ah, we couldn't find a way to squeeze you in. And to say, like, oh, we ran out of time. That is also complete bullshit. You right. don't think that this has been meticulously planned for months. And how long does it? I could fucking squeeze in a video tribute. Uh, hey, send me a video that you I can shoot tell on your you it was iPhone. Not planned for months. It was very much like thrown like together. a lot of the, yeah, like a lot of the people like even still Nesson were like yeah, like they invited me like a few days ago. <laughs> and like, See, I all right, well, e- well even play. still, so, that's on uh, you, you send a text that's on the Red hey, Sox. Send me a video on your iPhone with some words for Jerry. We'll splice it into a a uh, the video tribute. That, yeah, that I mean, takes that takes twenty. Sean minutes. McDonough's speech was seven minutes. Like. You you can get the message across in five. <laughs> give me give me two minutes. Like, and I don't even think that like the like I think Don's video probably it wouldn't have been a speech. It would have just been like a video message. Like he could like what he tweeted his script. You can make that video in sixty seconds. So you're telling me that you you could and and it, it was it's not even like the aesthetic of like oh well everyone was there and the speeches were delivered there so it would have been weird to like kick it up to the video board the fucking david ortiz retirement ceremony you know how many fucking people were video messages like they they did uh they had people that were there and gave speeches and then they were like hey it's fucking so and so and then like they did a video message and i'm pretty sure I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure Don might have been one of them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he might have been. Oh man. So yeah, I I don't know. It just it 
I, I place most of the blame, obviously, on like the Red Sox. Like, don't tell me that you didn't have time or space or like it wouldn't have looked as aesthetically pleasing if you if you cut to a video message when everyone else is making speeches at the ballpark. You could have made time for it. I think maybe the bitterness was that they they were upset that he didn't come or something. Or it's like, you know, like the, it's I guess they know that they were in the wrong for how it ended in the first place. They have to know that. Nesson has to know that. The Red Sox have to know that, that they were in the wrong for how things ended with Don Orsillo at the end of the 2015 season. So it's almost like, yeah, you hope all this time goes by and it's like, we're cool, right? And it's like, we're not cool. Yeah. It's and just, then you get mad at them for being mad at you. And then that's where the pettiness comes out. It's been tone deaf the entire fucking way. Because when was that like uh, when uh, John Henry was like, was he was st- talking to the media and he was like, and somebody asked a question about Don and, and John Henry was like, wait, fans are still mad about that? Seriously? Yes. Yeah, that happened. He was like shocked that fans still cared that uh, that Don Arcillo was kicked out. It's just the 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 ownership group seemingly has no grasp on what fans on like the fan perspective or anything. It seems like they are very tone deaf to what's going on with the with the fan base and what the fan base likes, what the fan base cares about. And it that's part of the reason why I I dislike this ownership group so much. Like I know they've done a lot of good things, but the the disconnect with the fan base and also sort of the monopoly that they've created with the way that the team sort of coverage runs, like I think that this wouldn't have happened if the Red Sox and Nesson weren't essentially the same entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Red Sox, Nesson, and the Globe, they're all under the same umbrella. Um, And that was one of the biggest concerns. Obviously, uh, Jake and Tyler are not going to remember this. And I sound like, well, back in my day, uh, when this ownership group came in, in 2002 to buy the Red Sox, that was the biggest storyline about this ownership group was everyone was like, well, they're not from around here. They're trying to just buy the team and turn a profit and then get the fuck out of here. Which, of course, when you buy a sports team, the 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 angle, it should be to win, number one. But number one is to turn a profit. Mm-hmm. It's to uh, make the franchise... Uh, more valuable so that when you do sell it someday, you make a fuck ton on your investment. And essentially, when they do decide to sell the team someday, that's what will happen. I'm sure they're gonna, like their return on investment is going to be fucking astronomical. And uh, not, not three point nine billion evaluation from Forbes in March. Yeah, and, like what did they, they turned, buy it for? Like four hundred million. Not only that, I mean, they turned Fenway into a fucking cash cow. Like. That is that place fucking prints money now. Um, but I, I think that like 380 you, million. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> right? um, and then you look at like what Fenway Sports Group is doing to uh, like branch out and expand the portfolio. That should cause like a little bit of unease for Red Sox fans, because when you have that many. Pieces of you know, the pie, your your focus is going to be taken away and the disconnect is ev- going to be even further from the Red Sox. It, it's just sure. like, it's not hard. If you go on Twitter and you scroll for 10 minutes under a Red Sox hashtag, every single day, there's still Don Orsillo content. And I think <laughs> it's especially like people like my age, like who grew up, like all I knew was Don and Jerry until, you know, 2015 or, you know, obviously the end there. Like, whether it's clips or whatever it may be. And Don is as active as anybody. People in the community of all ages are quote tweeting it, still talking. And, you know, Dave O'Brien, you know, you're filling impossible shoes here. We we know how that goes. Um, but no matter what, that connection, it's not like it's something that's died down in years. If anything, I think over some of the worst signings, whatever you want to say, Carl Crawford, Pablo Sandoval, throw any of those there. I think what gets brought up more than anything is the biggest mistake with ownership and everything that played out over this time and just how Don found out about that, you know, he was out the door and how all this stuff played out 
is letting him go because Don was the consistent. He was one of those things that transcended the game, that transcended the players, because no matter where the Red Sox were at, you always had Don and Jerry when you came home at night. Right. And and it has not been the same since. Never. Like, it don't, never will be. Yeah. Like there there was a there was a bond and a chemistry that simply cannot be duplicate duplicated. And that's not to say that Dave O'Brien is not a good broadcaster. He's a great broadcaster. But like in terms of like baseball being a sport where the games are every fucking night. And the broadcasters of your favorite team become like family to you. You hear their voices every single night. <clears throat> and uh, with with Don and Jerry, it was like, yeah, like these these are the guys. Like these are the guys that like our generation grew up with. And it wasn't a mutual parting of ways. It was a fuck you. Thanks for being awesome. But fuck you for no reason. And, that, and you're not as important to everybody as you seem to think you are, which you right. know, you're completely wrong about. Right. Like the fact that it has been going on seven years and we're still talking about it, still mad about it. And you, the Jerry Remy tribute was a reminder of like how mad people still are about it every time. And like, I know I'm not the only one saying this. You click on a Padres game, you hear that slam Diego call. It's awesome to hear Don, and I think so many Red Sox fans will tell you they still tune in just to hear him, but it hurts. It hurts every single time because you know what could have been. You yeah. know what could have been in 2018 for another run on within itself. The last year, all these different years where we've had fun, and even the downs, it's like there was so much missed there, and you had a chance to hold on to that for so long for a guy who wanted to be here, who loved being here, and good for Don. He has everything he could want in San Diego. But it yeah. sucks and it's always going to hurt that I, a guy you could have had isn't here anymore. And it part of me is like a, a little, a little glad that he's still so fucking petty that of uh, that uh, that like the divorce happened the way that it that it did. Like it would honestly like hurt more if he just moved on to San Diego and was like, "Well, I'm glad this happened. This is great. Like I, I have, I'm living the life. I'm, I want him to be happy, but I also want him to be as pissed off as we are that it went down the way that it did." Because, I mean, I'm still pissed. I think that most Red Sox fans are still fucking pissed. And it it makes me, I'm glad that, that Don is in our corner and like fucking pissed as well. As he should be. Yeah. Is what, like, we'll never get over it. We'll never get over it. It's just, it doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense then. It hasn't made sense as the years have gone on. It's actually made less sense as he... It is a, a, a cult hero in San Diego. It's just more of a reminder of what could have been had he stayed here. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's just uh, I, I think I think with this most recent incident, like Chad Finn had the tweet about. It, it sounds like this was a just a very unfortunate miscommunication, misunderstanding, and everyone was like, "Bullshit! Fuck the Red Sox! Fuck Ness!" and blah blah blah. It, I think I think part of that is true. I, th I think part of it is true. Not all of it is true. Like again, I, I think the idea that you couldn't have fit a video into the the tribute in the ceremony is that's not true. Like yes, you could have. Like I, I it would have fit perfectly after McDonough before TC wrapped it up. It would have been perfect right there as as your main event. And uh, I, I think it even says that in in Pam's tweet. I think direct quote she said. Because you do not recognize the career of Jerry Remy without Don Arcillo. You don't. He's the first call you make. She yeah. said that herself. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you yep. said, Jared, like, we were like, I, you know, I don't want to, like, you didn't want to, uh, like, take it, take any attention away from, from Jerry. But at the same time, like, there is no Jerry without the, without like pairing it with Don and Jerry. Right. And that's like not taking anything away from Jerry, but like that, that shared chemistry was part of the reason why we loved Jerry so much. Right. And once Don moved on, you missed that because it just wasn't, it wasn't something that you could recreate with like any guy that you just put next to the next to Jerry. Right. That's and why everybody's so fucking pissed that they got rid of Don. 
because they they treated it like, oh, well, we can take that guy away and just recreate it with somebody else. No, you can't. No. Wasn't even close. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't even close. I'm not trying to throw shade to Dave O'Brien either, but he wasn't there. You know, he's sick. He's under the weather. Did anyone really even think twice or even really no. go in any direction? But everyone noticed, oh, Don's not here. There hasn't been a specific Don thing yet. Yeah. Don was the guy. And and again, to your point, it's not it's not taking a jab at Dave. It's just like Dave is a more traditional broadcaster, right. whereas Don was a more like vibrant and, and humorous character. Um, Don felt like your friend. Yeah. Dave is yeah. like a traditional play by play guy. Don when you think is of like Dave a O'Brien, podcaster. You think, yeah. Like when you think of Dave O'Brien's famous calls, you think of like David Ortiz, like you think of like the call. When you right. think of Don Arcillo, you think of the funny moments. Right. But That's he also knows how to fucking call a game, too. He sure does. He sure does. But in terms of like sen- sentimental value to a, a fan base, we obviously hold those funny moments, I guess, more near and dear to our hearts than like a home run call, so to speak. And it's yeah. stuff that connects you with people who may not be the most diehard of fans, the people right. who are more casual in your life that sat and would watch a game and just just to watch, you know, see what's going on. They had that connection with them. And I think that's the other stuff that, like, like you said, you're never going to get with just a traditional Dave yeah. O'Brien 2013 call, whatever it may be. And, yeah. it's, and I think like that is the the biggest luxury to have with a baseball booth, because there's so much downtime in baseball that like if you can fill a half inning that's nothing really nothing really of importance happens but you have like a great conversation and great chemistry and they turn it into one of like the most memorable moments of the season it's that's like something that i still miss because you you welcome that booth into your house like for the diehard fan 162 nights a year and you spend hours on hours on end with them. And like Jared said, it, like they kind of become like a part of your household. And without that chemistry, it feels more just like a, like a run of the mill average broadcast and not like, like friends. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing was where you started to notice it was, you know, you went back to 2012 or 2014 when things were just, you know, it, the game itself, it, it wasn't going well. It wasn't super fun to be a Red Sox fan in that sense. When you skip forward to 2020, and obviously there was a lot of other stuff going on, but that team was so miserable to watch, so boring. And you sat there and, you know, no offense to Dave O'Brien, it's just, it was so hard to get through some of those games because you just didn't have that Don Orsillo like character there to make you laugh and make you enjoy those games like he would when things sucked in the past. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I, I can't, I can't recall like a single moment since Don left where, they were like they found something funny in the stands and were like doing commentary on people just existing at the game like that that's what made it great but to to the point that i was trying to make earlier uh that was that was my first thought after the ceremony was over was where the fuck was the don video i didn't even know that there was plans for a don video it's just like all right well he's not here we get it i mean he is the broadcaster of the san diego padres um but where's where's like the the video? It just felt very odd to me. It felt like, um, in a way, it felt like the fucking broadcast since he left. It just feels like something's missing. Like where where's where's Don? Uh, so yeah, I, I in conclusion, um, yeah, I, I I just don't I don't buy into the idea that there is no place for it, and I think a lot of fans universally would agree uh whether you were there or not whether you're watching on tv whether you were at the ballpark um i don't think you could have watched that ceremony and been like yeah i don't see where it fits you know i don't see where the fucking uh his most uh identifiable broadcast partner just mm, just really didn't have a place in this and then you know you see some of the people over there and they're like well we we put clips of him on the video boards that's not enough 
Like Don's not dead. Like but, uh, you, you, you have the ability to to include him somehow outside of fucking clips from two thousand and seven. Right, and that's like we can go fucking look up those clips ourselves if we want to. They're posted all over Twitter, yeah, right. like on a week to week basis. And no. like you said, Pete, it that John Henry quote, that different stuff there. It's just how do you still not understand after everything? How have you not figured out how much this means to people? Yeah, and one day. One day, because uh, Don still hasn't spoken publicly about this, uh, I think he's getting. I think he's getting closer to that. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to that point where he's he's gonna have some takes. And I don't know that I'd be the first guy in line, but I imagine I'm somewhere close to the front of the line. For, for also, that I, I took a little bit of issue. I, I I like Chad Finn. I think you you like Chad Finn. I took a little bit of issue with him saying that that uh, it was like, I don't know if he said tasteless or something, but that's essentially what he said, that, that Don said something immediately the night of. When the fuck he, else was he going to say? That's it, the, I mean, like, wh- like what what responsibility does Don have to be like, well, I'll I'll sit on this for a few days. So the it like so I, I, I guess like, you know, the point was like it it took away from the ceremony a little bit. Here's the thing. About you know, what took, away from the the you know what took away from the ceremony was the Red Sox not having Don Orsillo involved. Yes. And here's the other thing, because I saw many people had this take of, well, Jerry would have Jerry would have wanted Don to be part of the ceremony. Yes, correct. But I have to believe that there was a part of Jerry that would have loved the fact that it's like, and, a, and just a reminder of how much you fucked up by getting rid of this guy, use my ceremony as an avenue to remind everyone how fucking awesome me and Don were together. Mm-hmm. I feel like that uh, if people want to put words in Jerry's mouth by saying, oh, he would have loved this. Well, yeah, I think I think he would have loved that people were talking about how great they were together. So there's that. Uh, I hope one day... Uh, Don can can find some peace from all this because I think you know it's it's pretty clear that he's he's still upset about it and I would be too. Um, I think it's admirable that he's gone this long without really blowing the lid off of what happened and naming names and being like this person and that person and you know I, I he's he's. He has much stronger will than I ever could aspire to have. Uh, so, but again, I feel like someday he's going to want to sit down and he's going to talk, want to talk about what happened. And uh, I'm just saying that's, you know, this, whatever the fuck this podcast is called is a great place to do it. We're here for you, Don. <laughs> We're here for Dio. We love, we love us some Donnie O and we love us some Jerry Remy. And I will say, Shout out to the Red Sox. Uh, outside of the fucking major gaffe of not including Don, it was a great ceremony. It was. The video tribute was great. Um, that's got to be what? Uh, Carter over there. Um, and yeah, I mean, Pam, who who had the statement, like she was very, very heavily involved in, in getting everyone in the same place, making sure that schedules lined up so the, the right people were there. So it's not a complete sewer job of the Red Sox. But anyways, huh. baseball fans, it's time to step up to the fucking plate with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. New customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If the sports book isn't available in your state yet, you can till you can still take a swing at stacks of green with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Baseball Contest. New customers can play for free for thousands in prizes with their first deposit. All you got to do pick a lineup of two pitchers and eight batters while staying under the salary cap and rack up points for hits, runs, strikeouts, and more. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code Jared, J-A-R-E-D. 
Bet just $5 and win $200 in free bets if your team wins their game. That is promo code Jared at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. you got to be 21 plus to play. Restrictions apply. MLB trademarks used with permission. See the show notes for details. Um, Pete, we got to talk. We do. We sure do. Yeah, we're we're getting to we're getting to like a little bit of like un, uncomfy territory. I'm not. Again, I'm there. I I've already. I'm on the record as of last episode saying that um, if you end up being 0 and 29, let's just say worst case scenario, you're 0 and 29. I think it's. I think you're selfish, but it's also great for content. The chase of your first win of the season the chase for 30 becomes just the chase for one really it's a chase within mm-hmm. the chase um yeah i've decided i'm i'm i'm, I'm not backing off <laughs> it's not gonna happen i'm sorry <laughs> to you because the red sox are going on the road we'll get to the stop and shop look ahead later later in the program uh but the red sox are going on the road they don't come back until the first week of may here um how many games of that homestand do you plan on ruining <laughs> Uh, I don't know because the, uh, the, uh, Stanley cup playoffs are right on the horizon. And That's when the Sox will get hot. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, but I am, uh, I am for sure down for like as many day games as I can sneak in. Okay. So they have a day game on May 5th. They're playing the angels. That's a getaway day for the angels. Um, and then what the fuck? Why do we have an 1135 AM game on May 8th? Oh, that's the uh, the peacock thing. The morning, the uh, ba- it's like morning Sunday baseball. The Red Sox oh. are the first game to do it. There's I can like, absolutely get down with that. Yeah, there's like 17 or 18 of them coming up this year, but the Red Sox are the first one. Why are they doing that? Apparently, they think it's a way uh, to have another exclusive window to reach people because on Sunday morning, people are looking for uh, baseball to watch. I mean... <laughs> NBC, because that's a Peacock thing. NBC, mm-hmm. like, has has the numbers of like w- what people are willing to watch in the mornings because they're the uh, they're the soccer channel, and I assume mm-hmm. that they do pretty pretty well in the mornings. Um, so I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. The cock does well in the mornings, Pete. That's right. That old morning cock. That's what they say. Wake up, throbbing for baseball. I'll tell you what. This cock don't do great in the morning. I don't know if I want to have hmm. this conversation. I'm talking Continue. about the. I'm talking about. I don't like to watch baseball on Peacock in the morning. I don't. I don't know if I want to watch anything on Peacock. If we're being honest, but um, WWE's on uh, Peacock. I wouldn't know. I think that first Sox game will be uh, on NBC, so you'll be able to watch it. You know, not oh, just through, yes. yeah, not just through the platform, but after that, it's exclusive. It becomes one of those, you know. I didn't even know that NBC got MLB. Wild. Yeah, what is going on? Like MLB is. <laughs> I feel every- like MLB like is in every like MLB is the the town slut. Yeah, just they're on, they're sleeping on, with every network on TV at this point. YouTube, Apple, Apple TV, TV, fucking the cock, ESPN, uh, ESPN. Uh, they're all over the place. That, <sighs> Anything to make it harder to watch. Typical uh, Fox. You want it, they got it. Yeah, they really do. E- literally every network on TV. Yeah. They used to be TBS. Do they still have the Braves? No. They might. I mean, TBS has had the playoffs for each of the past few years. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's Turner that like in like Turner has like USA as well. Like. FS1. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. The FS1 has had some playoff games. Tune in to uh to fucking Lifetime original <laughs> network for some Red Sox Yankees later this year. MLB Network has games, obviously. I can't wait for that. I mean, fucking it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that we'll have like an MLB Nickelodeon game at some point. That would rule. Yeah, I'm down for that. What would that look like? Walk off home run, you get slimed at home plate. <laughs> Let's fucking go. 
<laughs> what did they call it that uh the end or the nvp was that the uh yeah. whoever played the best in that game you end up pulling that so we get one of those breaking out for the game mm. okay i would i would love a just like yo you give up a big home run you just the pitcher just gets absolutely slimed nick pavetta going down to one knee just falls all over him nick pavetta man we'll get to him in a minute jake mm-hmm. have the red sox won a fucking series yet um they won the tigers one didn't they yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. All right. We didn't do fucking Clark's catch up for the Detroit series. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to Was that just did somebody fart or was that no, a truck? I, that, that was a truck. Oh <laughs> <laughs> that was just a little, a little toot. Yeah. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh that was a truck. Um yeah, the I forgot to tell you guys that whenever we do a series recap. Uh, only if the Red Sox win these series, we give out the Clark's Ketchup Series MVP, sponsored by Clark's Ketchup. Um, so Clark's came over to DraftKings with us. Yes. So thank you for Clark's for being our uh, a loyal supporter. Thank second you. Second sponsor. Yeah, we have Stop and Shop and Clark's Ketchup so far. We have other sponsors that are coming too, right, Jake? Yeah, a whole <laughs> bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, Stop and Shop wasn't gonna, Stop and Shop wasn't gonna not come, uh, and then Clark's was like, "What the fuck? What about us?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course." And then Stop I feel like I need a personal uh, Forty Seven brand sponsorship. I, I'll I even like, I'll, I'll take a New Era one. I uh, I threw away my hat that went zero oh, and two to start the season. That seems God, like I a just bought a brand new reaction. one. And I'm trying st- anything that I can. I just so this lost with the new hiring a manager after losing the first two games. There were two fucking horrible games, though. Like <laughs> that was some real like some shit's got to change. Something's not working. So I tossed the hat, bought this one and possibly the worst game of the season. The worst of the three. Actually, that's uh, yeah, probably. I don't know. It's hard to rank them because they all fucking sucked. So, Pete, you threw out the hat. Now you realize throwing out the hat made no sense because you're still again. you're still making it bad. Mm-hmm. Double. Uh, yeah, I'm, I maybe the hat wasn't the problem, but we'll it's figure you. out what the problem is. Yeah, it's what do not you think me. The problem it's is, not dude. me. I went to the Celtics game this week, and the Celtics. Well, what a what an incredible game that was. Definitely a they different did. sport, in my personal opinion. It is, but at the end of the day, I was in the building. And they proved an ability to win. Mm-hmm. So what's the fucking Red Sox excuse? I don't know why I just thought of this now, but Pete was fucking drunk for the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite drunk for the last episode. I couldn't tell at all. That's wild. Anybody else? You felt loose. Yeah, I was quite loose. It was Marathon Monday and I had been drinking for like close to 10 straight hours by the time that we had started recording so uh, i couldn't tell at all i i woke up the next morning sent jared a text was like <laughs> hey could you tell that i was not on my best behavior last night and you're like i couldn't tell at all i was like okay that's the that's the the motivation that i need to start my day let's let's get up and at him I, I mean i i'm gonna be a terrible father like <laughs> if I have a kid that's just like shit faced and they're like, I just can't tell. Like, that's that's a bad look for me. To be fair, one of my friends who I was out drinking with that day also tuned into the podcast just to see what I sounded like because mm-hmm. we'd been drinking all day. And he was like, dude, I an unbelievable performance by you. I couldn't <laughs> tell. Now so. that you do mention it, you and Pat were quite feeling each other by the end of <laughs> yeah. the podcast uh and me the, and pat were vibing for sure about there's, going out together I, I see it now yeah yeah there's big time like i love you man I love <laughs> 100%. You too, dog. like if me oh, and pat knew best, each other man. a little bit better uh during that episode we, we probably would have tried to kiss each other through zoom yeah um but we're, we were a lot closer to kissing by the end by the like our relate i feel like our relationship took a big big step during that episode because we just vibed yeah yeah you could see it i i'm yeah you i could see you guys vibing because you guys are like the second and third biggest drinkers on the podcast 
I didn't drink a fucking thing at Fenway today. Wow. Uh, and it didn't help. So the drinking's not the problem. You didn't even tell me you were going. Like the fact that you just like go to games and don't even tell me when I live down the street is fucking uh, wild. It was it was listen, amazing to listen, see Pete let the account know that he was at the game oh, actually, yeah, after I they tried the to chirp him. I baited the fuck out of that account. And I and all right, so here's these both tie together because Jared, I said that I was going to Thursday's game several times during the podcast. Uh, to the point where I remember you being like, yo, Pete, you literally because I said like at the end of the episode, I was like, I'll be there Thursday. And you're like, yeah, I know you said it like six times already. True. This is correct. <laughs> and then uh, I also told the uh, did Pete go to the game Twitter account that I was mm-hmm. going to be there on Thursday and the account let it rip before <laughs> they must have forgotten because they tweeted no and this was like in the third inning and I was I was like, I'm going to wait to see if if the account says no. And they did. And I was all over their fucking ass. Yeah, that's great. That's great that you're you're holding. I mean, if they're going to hold you accountable, you should hold that's them right. accountable too. that. You know, that motherfucker is going to be terrified to, to, to type. No, like right. I feel like I'm going to get a DM every day being like, yeah. yo, you got the game. I mean, it's, it's I basically make sure like, a, like a steroid tester. You Pete's got to piss in a cup. The, if you're going to tweet out that Pete's not there, you better fucking confirm with Pete that he's not there. That's right. As long Check as we sources. make a rule, we have to protect the integrity here. Like you, if if he or she asks you, are you at the game? You can't say, yeah, I'm not going to no lie so that they f- you blow the tweet. Yeah, like you have and, to be and honest. Like I've I've tried to give the account a heads up when I'm going to be there. I mean, yeah, apparently you said it six fucking times last episode. Yeah, that's right. Um, but uh, yeah, the vibes were off uh, at uh, what's today's uh, Thursday? Wednesday? Yeah, what, Thursday? Thursday. Thursday's game. I uh, it was part of a like family four pack thing that I had that we got. Mm-hmm. And today was like the first uh, one of the first. And I totally I was like, you know, it's weird. It's a getaway day. Weird Thursday, 130 p.m. start. I was like, OK, I wonder what the crowd's going to be like. I totally fucking forgot that it's school vacation and uh, I don't know if it was the uh, I don't know if it was like school vacation or the family four pack type deal, but there were so many kids and it was tough, man. Some little girl in my section spent about 45 to 70 minutes trying to start the wave, just screaming one, two, three over and over and over again. No, I did it. No. And then there was a <laughs> thank at one, you. At one point, there was a. uh a very out of sync. Let's go Red Sox chant mm-hmm. with like some some young shrill kids. How, how out of sync? Can you do it for me? Well, I, I need like a secondary person to like start chanting. Let's go Red Sox about right, Tyler. Can you do it? two and a half seconds yes. after I start it? OK, go ahead. All right. Let's go Red let's Sox. Let's go Red Sox. They, yeah, they, let's go Red Sox. Red Sox. And, let's go. Yeah. They, they, so that was that for about like f- mm, I want to say like 17 minutes. Also, it took me about uh, I missed two full innings trying to get a hot dog. How two? did you do that? Two full fucking innings Ugh. because I went to the absolute I, I went to the absolute worst concession stand worker at Fenway Park. No clue what they were doing. The you line did not get move. a hot dog. How do How you do fuck you? that up? It's you would be shocked. Shocked. I'm, I'm not joking. I can verify with uh, a couple of my buddies. We missed two full innings. <laughs> I think they knew Pete. They knew. They recognized <laughs> it was you a immediately. stalling tactic. <laughs> yeah, they were trying to keep you away from the game, or trying to get you so frustrated that you would just leave the ballpark. <laughs> now you might not be wrong. <laughs> Did you think about it? Did you think about leaving? I I thought about I thought about like leaving Earth, leaving yeah. leaving life. Yeah. That could work. That could work. Do you get Do you get stopped now at Fenway? Yeah, there was a couple people today that, that came and uh, asked for pictures. Do they and say I love you on that podcast or whatever the fuck it's called? No, uh, I mean, I, I know that that's what they that's how they recognize me. But uh, we don't have a name, so it's tough to be like, yo, I like you on. Oh, shit. I, what the fuck <laughs> is the podcast called? Like, right. Can I even say the words Red Sox? Um, <laughs> can I even say? <laughs> but yeah, the, I, I took a picture with a couple kids today and uh, and literally after i had taken a picture with one of them he was walking away and he was like 
yo, stop coming. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he made, he made sure to get his picture first. And then on the way out was like, hell nah. Yeah. Get out. Thank uh, you for your service. The frustrations right. are, are mounting. It's crazy. Like I'm getting, I'm getting like DMs on social media of people being like, stop going. Mm -hmm. And it's increasing in numbers uh, with every loss. So if this really starts to pick up steam, I might just have to deactivate and get off the internet for a little bit. Don't let them bully you, Pete. Also, question for you. Do you think that it'll get better if you win one or do you think that you'll have to eventually get to a winning record of some sort? No, I think I think like once I honestly, I, I'll be honest with you. I I'm hoping it gets to a point where it's like so, <laughs> so terrible <laughs> that when I do finally get one that there's like a parade in discussion. <laughs> like, I, I think what you would need to have happen. I think what's making it worse is that they're losing every game that you go to, but then they're still losing the games that you're not going to, too. So it's it's tough because if, if that's definitely not that's definitely not uh, I don't know I th I feel like that's sort of helping me a little bit because now I can say like the team just kind of sucks right now. I don't think it's helping because it's it's like we don't have games to just hand over with the Pete curse. But if it but if if it was if it was not that. With the with me having to go to thirty games, that's a lot of games, and mm -hmm. if like they're losing all of those, it's literally on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just glad that it's falling on you because you were out in front of this. Like I've gone to two games; they've lost both. <laughs> no one's talking about me being a curse. They're just like, yeah, that fucking Pete piece of shit. He goes to another game that they lose. I went to opening day and I went to the Re Remy ceremony, mm -hmm. and they lost both games. I uh, I haven't really felt bad about it until today. Mm -hmm. because your mom commented on my Instagram and was like, you need to stop going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint Ellen. Are you kidding right. me? Yeah. It's that's the last thing in the world I want. And she like started in like in typical Ellen fashion, she started it off so nice. She was like, I love you, Pete, but, but you're a fucking disappointment. Stop <laughs> going to Fenway. When you were sitting there in the ninth, Pete, did you feel like a sense of like, was it excitement? Was it like, wow, I'm going to get this off my back? Or was it just fear that the nightmare could continue? No, I was excited because it was a day after the Celtics and the Celtics played like absolute dog shit for about like three quarters. And then they completely turned it on in the fourth. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a carbon copy of the Celtics game. This is going to rule. Uh, and then as soon as Dahlbeck got out, I was like, OK, this is over. <laughs> By the way, the people that are fucking all over Bob. For that ninth inning, he smoked a ball to the literal best defensive third baseman in baseball. 103 like, off the damn bat. Yeah, get him off the fucking team. What does fucking Bobby Dahlbeck even do on this team? It's like, I mean, he was any other third baseman in the league maybe away from tying that ball game. It's also like 13 games, right? Like, yeah. chill the fuck out. I can't. I, I think... Over time, I have just learned to not even engage with the overreactors. The season's way too goddamn long. Uh, I don't know why people, baseball fans, have amnesia and forget truly how long the baseball season is. And I, I like how many ebbs and flows there are to a baseball season where the Red Sox could finish seven games under 500 in April. And then they might be 12 games over 500 the next month. I, it just, it is, it's a fucking weird game. It's very unpredictable as I'm finding out making these goddamn parlays for DraftKings where I did what? I did three money lines today, Jake. The only one I needed to hit was the fucking Red Sox winning and they didn't. I had Mets money line, Marlins money line and Red Sox. And they were a run away from at least tying that game and making it happen for for all the people that were riding with my bet on the uh, DraftKings Sportsbook app, which, I mean, goddamn, if there's anyone you want to talk about with someone needing a goddamn win, it's me. <laughs> Are they still getting on you, Jared? What, the the gamblers? Yeah. They, yeah, I mean, they they don't love the fact that my bets aren't fucking 
it's not even that they're not winning. They're just they're coming as close as possible to winning without winning. Like I think it, it was well. That's what that's literally what a parlay is every time. Yeah, it's it's either you lose every piece of it or you hit every piece except for one. Yeah, but they're just like they're they're cruel because that that other parlay that I had where it was like Red Sox money line. Kike to get a hit, he hit a home run, and then JD to have uh, two plus total bases, and he had a base hit and three walks. And the fact that like walks don't count as total bases, and that's when I went on that total bases rant. And then this one was Mets, Marlins, Red Sox, and the Red Sox lost by one run and left the tying run at third base in the bottom of the ninth. So like they're they're losers, but they're about as close as you can get to winners. So we're getting there. It's it's gonna take it's just gonna take a, a little bit of time to, you know, get this on top of this on top of this on top of this, and next thing you know, you're uh, you're you're crushing these parlays. So you just gotta ride the wave. Um, if you've been if you've been riding these parlays with me, I mean, I'll, I'll take you to the promised land. It's just it's just gonna take a little bit. Sometimes sometimes it takes a little bit. Um, the biggest takeaway from this series against the Toronto Blue Jays is for as much as people were blowing the Blue Jays, Red Sox can hang with them. I I think they were way scarier last year for, for a team that didn't make the playoffs. When the Red Sox went, I mean, obviously it's, it's a three game series. I'm not going to completely um, blow it out of proportion here, but I feel like for whatever reason, the Blue Jays were scarier last year or at least they gave off that vibe to me last year versus this year. Um, I don't know. I I was impressed by Gosman, who was my preseason Cy Young pick. Um, Yo, he I had mean, like 60 pitches through six scoreless. Yeah. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? But see, that is getting so old. And like, I think that was probably one of my biggest takeaways from the series. Like the classic Red Sox way of wearing pitchers down has just not existed this year, like not at all. And I think it was a problem last year at times. I think that was one of the reasons they went and got Kyle Schwarber in the first place. Someone who could really work in at bat. Like they have the highest chase rate in all of baseball right now, the second highest swing percentage and the sixth worst OBP. Why do you have guys like Joe Ryan, Bailey Ober, Dylan Bundy? Gosman's obviously a class above them, but they're sitting here and going this deep into games when nobody's going deep into games right now. The at bats are garbage. They they just are not good, and it's early in the year. This team's gonna hit, but it's hard. It, it's miserable to watch at times. What's the their games swing are rate? Fucking flying. Ah, fifty one percent, second uh, highest in it, the American League or Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball, the White Sox are at fifty one point one. So you're basically there. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to someone over with the Red Sox today, and the last thing they said was, "We swing a lot." <laughs> <laughs> too much. It's it's way quote. too much. It's, it's it, There's no pace of play problem with any of the Red Sox games because they're not hitting and they're swinging at everything. Yeah. It's a very brisk pace of these games. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the fact that I had to send four are you okay messages in the last couple of days. Had to Cora, Story, Arroyo. And JD, you good? You all right? You okay? Like between COVID and getting fucking smoked in the head and then JD with the hamstring and Arroyo just barreling into a wall out there. I mean, God damn. And by the way, Christian Vasquez is already back. I, I was like, wait Fast. a second. Yeah, <laughs> that was a quick turnaround. That was a quick turnaround from COVID. Uh, Pilecki, Pilecki's just toughing it out with COVID right now. Um Funny story about Pawecki. Uh So uh, this studio that I'm in right now, my apartment, is like I'm doing the podcast studio on this side of the room, and on the other side, I'm doing. Um, you have a studio apartment, and then you're very poor. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <clears throat> Get fucked, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side, I'm doing a video studio where. I've got like shelves on the wall. I'm going to do like a bat rack and I want to put like 
not like necessarily a dildo, but like when they found like the dildo in the clubhouse and like the Mets clubhouse, like I want to do something like that where there's like subtle items that are on this this shelf. And Kevin Puecki is donating one of his cups. I was like, yeah, he's going to autograph one of his cups and I'm going to put it on the shelf. And if I ever do a, a hit on a <clears throat> network, um, then we'll, that'll be Kevin Puecki's testicle protector right up there. I don't know what else to put up there. I want to do the Wade Miley uh, cow milking photo. I was, I was literally going to ask, do you want, do you want that? Like, I don't want to, I don't, don't want I don't, I don't to give it away, but right. I think that you should have something from the original Section 10 studio. Yeah. What else did we have besides? Like, that's the only thing I remember from it. We had pic- we had pictures all over the walls. That's the only one I remember. What else did we have? Just like a ton of fucking pictures. Like what? I don't know. Just like tons of Red Sox pictures. Oh, I mean, I could give you the Alan Craig picture. That would kind of be funny. The the picture of him breaking his bat with the Paw Sox. Oh yeah, <laughs> that that would be a pretty good one to yeah to pass off. I have an Alan Craig personalized signed baseball. Hell yes. Lucky. Yeah. I have a Wade Miley signed jersey. Are you getting amnesia? Are you? <laughs> what? Really? Do you? Did, did I say this? Yeah. Oh. Mm. It's okay. Either just, I mean. I, oh, I, I, I have no recollection of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to judge Pete for not remembering Jared when you also did not remember multiple things and you were sober last podcast. We're even. Yeah. Let's say it's a wash. It's fair. How the fuck Bo- did Wade Miley come up last week or last? I mean, episode? you're you're you. That's that's fair. Mm-hmm. What do you think would happen if we went to a game together? If we're both, if you're zero three and I'm zero two, that's a good question. Maybe maybe that's the problem. Yeah, is that we're just like dividing. If we if we like unite and conquer, that might be the solution. Right. Two negatives is a positive, right? Negative yeah. two times negative two is four, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So maybe that's, that's... I think that might be the solution. Right. We have to try, try it out next week. Yeah, Tyler, you want to come to a game with us, Jake? I'd love to. When's the day game? Next week? Thursday. Ooh, right? I'm going I'm going to the the uh the Bruins that night. That well, would be a nice little double header yeah, for your you boy. Incapacitated. I also fucking hate day games. <laughs> I, just I love day games. Outside. They're the absolute best. 135. 135 on May 5th. That so could not be the next week. The week before. After. No, May 5th is... Yeah, you're right. It's two weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe, I mean, I think that, that Chicago White Sox series, there might be some... Some guests that want to come to to Fenway Park for that series. You know, maybe they're allowed to talk to me. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Tanner Houck, by the way, why I I I get the people that are upset with Tanner Houck about the vaccination thing. Why do the reporters keep baiting him into attempting to get him to talk about it when he's already kind of addressed it? And like, it, like no amount of reporter questioning is is going to make Tanner Huck be like, all right, fine, I'll get fucking vaccinated. Like, why? Why continue to because, he, you know, he was asked about it twice after his start today. And his response was like, yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. Like I've and, already addressed it. I'm not gonna. He it. yeah. He like drew the line today. He was like, I'm not gonna anymore. Like I, I'm I'm done talking about it. It's just how many times can you say the same thing over and over again? Right. They're just yeah. trying to elicit reactions. Because look at look at Twitter. Every single time someone tweets, you know, it in an article or whatever it may be, that's get more more interactions than anything else. Right. Because it's Twitter. And exactly. It's chaos. It's they've. It, it's like a political thing. The vaccination status and like I even. Like I don't know what the adjective would be here, but I, I find it interesting that when it comes out, like Alex Cora test positive for COVID, he's vaccinated and boosted. Like they make a point to like let you know their vaccination status when they test positive for COVID, and it's like it's I don't know if that's their way of being like, all right, don't crush him. Like he's he's vaccinated and he's boosted, so yes, he has COVID, but. 
he's not one of them. He's not one of those people that that didn't get the vax. Then you have so. the people who can't read, who somehow still ignore that, <laughs> and they're they're responding. Are you kidding me? How mm. like who's it been also more could vocal? Be a, it also could be like a like maybe just letting people know that like it because if you're vaccinated, the the effects back of COVID, right? The effects of COVID and like the return time is quicker. And yeah, like less extreme. Vasquez was back the next day. That was. That- the fastest I think I've ever seen an athlete return from COVID ever. Poor Ronaldo Hernandez didn't even get to make his debut. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I guess it must be like if you test negative. I don't know. I don't know what the fucking rules are. I just, I'm, I'm just over, I'm over it. Um, but Tanner Houck looked great again. Uh, that that video of his slider from the behind the the catcher view was it looked fake it looked fake that's how that's how much break is on his slider um there was like another one i think that pitching ninja put out where it was like an overlay of an outside fastball and a slider away to a left-handed hitter and the pitches had like the same plane up until like they were 20 feet away from home plate <laughs> I just don't know how you get a hit off that guy. I'm excited for Tanner Houck this year. I, yeah. I feel like that's one of those guys, and Michael Walker will talk about in the Stop Shop Look Ahead, but uh, Tanner Houck is a guy that I'm very excited about, and I feel like the, the more that you hype him up, the more people get upset that he's not going to pitch in Toronto. Mm. Did you uh, did you see the the I don't uh, the Yankees prospect who had the slider that it was making the rounds on Twitter this week? Mm-hmm. You see that one? That mm-hmm. was uh, out of control, too. Yeah. That uh, that one looked fake. From that was like behind, that was like the, the broadcast view, and I was mm-hmm. holy fuck. Yeah, don't know who that guy is, but shout out to that slider. Shout out to that guy. Can I say yeah. one underrated part of the series, please? The bullpen. Yeah, the, the bullpen has been so strong for a majority of this year. Say they the name. Would, uh, say it. <laughs> they hold on. First off, you know what? Face of the franchise, Hansel Thank Robles. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for blessing Thank us again and again, you clowns yes. who kept crying at the deadline last year. <laughs> mm-hmm. Shove it up again and again and again. Oh, my God. Let your nuts hang. But yeah. overall, the bullpen. Two fake runs. They gave up two fake runs in the series. You had the Connor Wong drop third strike uh, when Matt Barnes was out there. That ended up leading to a run. He would have got out of that inning flawless. And then today with Ryan Brazier in the pop-up. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what more can you ask for? Yeah. Also, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Hansel Robles has like 19 consecutive scoreless appearances dating back to last year, which is either the first or second longest active streak in baseball right now. August like 30th was and that when was the like, scoreless streak started. And that's like his entire Red Sox career, essentially, right? Yeah. He he started off not so high. Like, I, I don't delete tweets. I've got some tweets where I'm like, I fucking hate <laughs> Hansel Robles and he's the bane of my existence. But I... I kept them there because I was like, yeah, like it's just. Yeah, don't be a bitch. Leave yeah, it you, you. I mean, I definitely flipped on him a lot sooner than everyone else. Like there's still people that that are like fucking out on Hansel Robles. And he's one of the best relievers in baseball history. It's not fair at that at this point. Like I think a lot of people, you could have said whatever you looked at what he was doing with the twins. But at this point, if you're still on the Hansel or the Hansel Robles hate train, you're a clown. I, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. There's no way. Multi innings here. The guys he's going down, Vlad Guerrero Jr. was almost in tears. Tears. I saw it. I saw his eyes. They were watering. Mm-hmm. Hansel Robles does not give a damn. Mm-mm. No. People thought I was joking when I said that it was the best move of the offseason. Like, all right, you know, Matt Barnes is a good reliever. Are you going to give him the closer spot? No. They they said they're not going to give it to anybody. Uh, Garrett Whitlock, obviously, like that extension was important, but that was after the season started. The Hansel Robles signing was, it, I think it could legitimately prove to be the best move that Heim Blue made all offseason. I'm not joking. He like, had think, one inning this spring. One inning. That's it. Doesn't give a damn. He couldn't give a fuck less how many innings he had in spring training. He, do, he, he doesn't have to get ready because he stays ready. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what Hansel Robles' lifestyle. Um. But Speaking of Whitlock and scary. Tanner Houck, I'm excited for the for the Whitlock start. Are you trying to fucking look ahead already? That's right, bitch. 
We're not um, fucking I'm looking ahead yet. Now. You no, scared don't, me. We don't have to get into it, but I, I just wanted to put that on the table. Um, Chubbed up for the Garrett Whitlock start. When the fuck is that happening? Saturday? Saturday, I believe. Because Rich Hill won't be there? <laughs> they're going to kick Hill the Sunday, and they're going to have Hulk piggyback him because Hulk won't be available in Toronto. Right. So you have Waka, Kluber, the Rays didn't name a starter for Saturday. All right. Well, Stop and Chop's not fucking ready yet. So <laughs> I no. I do want to ask you guys, Pete, you kind of gave me a little scary flashback there when you brought up Whitlock. What was going through your head that first game when you saw Bobby make that great play in the ninth, going to his right? He throws and Whitlock does his little slide kick and he starts limping around afterwards. I uh, I, I are you guys okay? I didn't see Tuesday's game. Okay, uh, I just remembered now. I thought I disconnected for a second there. I got a little scared. <laughs> I uh, I was at the movies on Tuesday. What did so, you see? Uh, the unbearable weight of massive talent. That sounds like the dumbest movie. It is an incredible movie. It is a fantastic time. Your it's, opinions on movies also can't really be trusted either. What? That is fucking false. No, I'm no. a I'm an expert movie boy. Uh, it's it's a it's a hilarious buddy comedy with Nick Cage and uh, Pedro Pascal. You might like it. No. You might like it. Are there boobs in it? No boobs. All right. Then. Mm. Sorry. I only watch movies with boobs in them. Mm. Check out Paddington too. A lot of boobs in that. There is there a website that's not like Mr. Skin that like you can just like type in a movie title and then it tells you if there's boobs in it or not. <laughs> that's gonna be my new invention. Flesh of the stars. That's there is a movie. There is a there is a website that has that functionality. Yeah, Flesh of the Stars. One more time, Pete. Let me get a pen. Flesh <laughs> of the stars. Flesh of the stars dot com. Thank flesh, you. Flesh of the stars dot com. Yeah. You just type in a movie and it tells you if there's boobs in it. Yeah. See, you don't get this joke because you don't watch movies. But this is uh, this was like literally the premise of Knocked Up. They were like they were going to make a a, a <laughs> website in which it, it tells you in every movie where there's like nudity, and then at the Wait, end. So of is the this a fake website? It's a fake website, but the the entire joke is that Mr. Skin exists. And so they thought they were coming up with this idea and they were just making Mr. Skin. Yeah, but Mr. Skin is a website where you can watch the clips of the nudity. Like I want, I just want to like type in like Titanic and then it just says yes or no. It'd be well, like, couldn't you just thumbs up. Couldn't you just do that on Mr. Skin and not watch the clips? I, it's it's almost like seeing a spoiler. Like you'd probably see like a <laughs> thumbnail with the boobs in it. Why Maybe. is that a bad thing? Because <laughs> I want to be I want to be caught to be off surprised. Guard. He wants surprise boobs. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not going to be surprised if you know they're coming at some point. That's not true at all. If you if you if I said, "Hey Pete, like you're going to see boobs in the next two hours and forty five minutes," that's plenty of time to be surprised. But if I told Pete he could see boobs in 10 seconds, which one is he going to pick every this single time? This is an outrageous elevator pitch. You want Mr. Skin, but without like the without the convenience factor. You want you just like you want to watch. You want to commit two hours of your life mm -hmm. to seeing 15 seconds of boobs. No, like so when I'm when I'm looking around, like I'll look at like Amazon Prime and Netflix and whatever. And I, I look for like a horror movie mm -hmm. and it's like, all right, it's like. This if it's rated PG thirteen, then I'm like, all right, well, the gore is not going to be satisfactory. So I need a horror movie that's going to be rated R. And then when I see if it's rated R, I'm like, all right, is it rated R for gore and drug use, or is it rated R for gore and nudity? Like, are there boobs? And I want to know up front that there's going to be boobs in the movie. You have the brain of a fucking eight year old. <laughs> Are there like anything in, anything outside of of baseball? You have the brain of an eight year old. Like, don't you, you want to know your brain outside of baseball? It's just 
wrestling chicken tenders boobs. <laughs> That's your brain. It's a good place to start. Yeah, but like if if you're going to sit down and watch a movie, I'm not saying I won't watch a movie that, that doesn't have boobs in it. That literally sounds exactly no, like what you're no, saying. No, no, no. I just want to know up front, like, all right, this, this one's got boobs. Like, let's go. Like, where are they at? Like it's something like. Are it, you afraid that you're like not going to be able to just like control your penis if if you <laughs> encounter boobs like by surprise? Something happened to you? No, it's just. I mean, I feel like it's just one of those things where you just want to know. Do you have to like put on your depends if you know that a movie is going to have boobs? I don't even remember the last movie I saw that had boobs. I don't know. Why I mean, was I it such I, a big deal? What, I mean, who doesn't love boobs? I'm noticing some inconsistencies here, Jared. Proceed. Everybody loves boobs, but not everybody like. Not everybody's making such a big deal out of. I'm just saying I want a website that tells you. You have one. And it you're has still existed not happy. for a long time. I guess I've never really used it. Maybe you should start. It sounds like it's right up your alley, pal. <laughs> Pete, you did say which Paddington had boobs? Paddington 2. Okay. What the, the hell two is that? The 2 famously stands for two two boobs. The bear? Yeah. I like that bear a lot. Uh, the bear's a great bear. Great. Mm. Good mm. bear. People are just yelling outside right now. They, they, they're pissed that we're talking about movies that don't have boobs in them. <laughs> I wonder if Mr. Skin actually like is still up and running. It is. It's got. Oh, you on there right now? <laughs> no. I am. Are you? Actually, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. My parental controls on my computer aren't letting re- aren't letting me get through. Oh no, no! I'm looking at CBD relief. Oh, that's, that's so smart. That's smart to grab that domain and 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 have it redirect to your business or something. If it doesn't exist. Um. Anyways, Red Sox offense was pitiful in this series. Yeah. Fucking how many? Four total runs. Uh, they scored two, one, and two, five. Yeah. yeah Up bad. until that ninth inning, it would have been three runs for the whole fucking series, right? Yeah. No four, four total runs. Uh, two. Oh yeah, you're right. Two one win. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Full Famously math for you. Math. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Linux. Even the game that they won, it was like that was the game that Valdi Valdi gave up seven hits and f- was it four and two thirds? Yep. Zach Collins was the only one. Took him deep. Yeah. Fucking Zach Collins, man. Can't be giving up home runs to Zach Collins. I do want to give Alex Cora some credit for keeping Nick Pavetta in in the second game, whether he wanted to or not. I felt like something clicked in those last two innings. The velocity jumped back up to 95, 96. We haven't seen that this year. That is true. He he His fastball was down about two miles an hour from his average fastball velocity. Um, and there was an uptick later in that start. So, um, yeah, why don't we, uh, why don't we, why don't we look ahead here? When we jump to the stop and chop look ahead, because apparently we don't know who the fuck is pitching. The, Michael Walker versus Corey Kluber in, in the, that that's actually happening. Tyler, I believe so. That sounds correct. Let me. I do know it's Michael Walker. Kluber has been good. Kluber has been good to start the year. Two starts, a one eight six ERA, um, a one one four whip. Uh, his cutter this year. Has been nasty. A nearly 40% whiff rate for Kluber's cutter. And by the way, no one's got a hit off of it yet. It's only been two starts, small sample size, but still impressive. Uh, Jackie Bradley, five for 16 with a double two homers and 1171 OPS against Kluber. Julio, nine for 31, couple doubles, couple homers, 839 OPS. And Travis Shaw who we saw in the series finale against Toronto, five for 17, couple homers, a 980 OPS against Kluber. Uh, some notes here on Michael Waka. 
I don't think we realize how good this motherfucker has been. He has a sub one ERA in two starts. He has an 086 whip in two starts. His changeup has been fucking nasty. Speaking of no one getting a hit off a specific pitch, no one has gotten a hit off of Michael Walker's changeup. And only three guys have put it in play. Pretty good. My little Walker's revenge guy, matchup. Man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so who the fuck is starting on Saturday? That's, that would be Garrett Whitlock. Correct. Garrett Whitlock. And he's getting piggybacked or no? They expect him 3-4 most. Okay. And we don't know who the fuck is pitching for Tampa because they haven't named that starter yet. All right. Uh, and then the finale. Is that not Nate? Uh, Sunday, Rich Hill. They're going to push him back a day. Coming off the bereavement list. It's going to be, and it's going to be, he's going to be back by Hauk, I believe. Correct. And it's still Shane McClanahan, yes? Correct. Yeah, so Shane McClanahan, three starts, a 240, and a one even whip. The fucking strikeouts per nine through the goddamn roof, 14.4. He's only finished five innings once so far in those three starts. And he's yet to throw more than 85 pitches, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to dice your ass up because he is. Uh, He's third in the majors and strikeouts behind uh, Carlos Rodon and Shohei Otani. He throws harder than pretty much any lefty starting pitcher in baseball. He's just sitting at 96.9 miles an hour with the heater. Um, And he throws four pitches and all of their whiff rates are... Absurd. Four seam, 21.1%. Curveball, 45.9%. The slider, 47.4%. And the changeup, 57.1%. Uh, Red Sox hitters, all time, zero extra base hits. Zero extra base hits against Shane McClanahan. So that, that series finale is going to be tough. And then if Sunday... This is an interesting little tidbit about Rich Hill. Uh, In innings two, four, and five, he has not allowed a run in his two starts. Two, four, and five. In the third inning, absolutely ear hold. Five of the seven runs allowed and uh, seven of the 11 hits allowed in the third inning. I don't know what the fuck happens in the third inning with Rich Hill, but that seems to be uh, where lineups have gotten to him the most through his first two starts. So, um, predictions. Tyler, I'll start with you. I'm going to go two out of three. Uh, two I out think, of three. Yep. I think we saw the offense finally show something, some life. Um, we know they're going to give JD one more day, but they're hoping to have him back for Saturday. Uh, so I, I think we get JD back. Things start rolling. The offense carries on some of the momentum, and uh, we pull two out of three out of there. I, and mm. I'll go. I like the Waka start, and I like Whitlock starting. I think that will give them a little bump. I think the guys will be kind of excited behind that too. Uh, so I, I'll say they take the first two. The last one ends up going the other way. Peter, I, uh, I'm going to say the exact same thing. I, uh, I feel two out of three. I think the first two. I, uh, that uh, that that uh, that Sunday game is going to be quite ugly. Throttled. Yeah, I think uh, we're gonna we're gonna have bad vibes maybe on Sunday, but we're gonna spend a lot of time being like, okay, this sucked, but let's let's not forget they got two wins to start the series. <laughs> Jake. I got the socks on the sweep with a Garrett Whitlock no hitter on Saturday. No oh, hitter on Saturday. Thank Folks. you. Thank you. Someone no, had to say it. No hitter through like are we talking like f- three, four innings no hit or like are we talking full nine because extra innings no hitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's gonna go twelve. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Let her rip. That's a good pick. <clears throat> um Uh, shit. Um, Wander Franco, by the way, is a goddamn menace. Let me just double check what 
what he's been doing this year. So we have the numbers. At least two home runs this series. Wander Franco is leading the league in hits. He's hitting 392. <laughs> he's hitting 392. The fact that he he only has one walk, so he's hitting 392 and his on base is 396 is very funny to me. Uh, but his OPS is 1024. He, he has seven fucking doubles, a triple, and only one homer. He's going to homer twice in this series. Minimum. Minimum. Uh, that being said, <clears throat> Red Sox two out of three. Uh, Red Sox two out of three. I think, oh man, what game do they lose? Uh, I think they lose the Whitlock game. Oh, fuck you. I don't think it's going to be Whitlock's fault though. Because if you use, yeah, I don't think it's going to be Whitlock's fault. I think Whitlock goes four shut and then something bad happens. Juan or Franco happens. No. Yeah. So I got Red, I got Red Sox two out of three. We're all in agreement. Jake's got the sweep, right? Mm-hmm. I okay. like it. It's not bad. Any other? Uh, Jake, did you have any thoughts on the Orsillo situation or is it more just in line with what we were saying? Yeah, I mean, I pretty much agree with you, what you guys were saying. Um, just the one thing I remember about Don and Jerry being together and again, not taken away from Jerry, but like Don's laugh was just so infectious. Like when you go back and look at, I think the here comes the pizza moment was <laughs> the anniversary was a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, like every time I go watch that video, I have to watch like the top three, four moments because they just get suggested on YouTube. And like they're all just I mean, Jerry is, is great in all of them. But like Don just adds that laugh into there where it's like when you hear him laugh, you can't help but just like get tears in your eyes. He, It's just incredible. So, um, yeah, for him not to be a part of that was just wild to me. I saw uh, I forget who said it, but I saw it on Twitter. They suggested that Don should have been there to throw out the first pizza instead of throwing the first pitch. That would have been in fucking incredible. Obviously, never going to happen. But how fucking funny would it be to see Don Arcillo stand on the mound and just throw a slice of pizza towards home plate? <laughs> all right, play ball, fellas. On like a really sad night, too. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, the ceremonial well, fucking pizza. Well, I'm a, like, I'm a big fan of shit like that, too. Like, to, to like you obviously, it's a sad night, but like, to remember the good times, get a laugh in there. Yeah. Like, that would be the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I think... Not sure the grounds crew would love it, but... No. I don't know when that day is going to be or how long it's going to take for those uh, wounds to heal, but I can't wait for Don's moment in the sun where he finally comes back to Fenway and like gets gets that love. Uh, I mean, he obviously got a ton of it while he was here in that last game, which like, like, I don't even know, like the fact that no one really knows what like me and Col- <clears throat> me and Coley did, like, that's like a, that's like a buried story now about Don Arcillo's last game at Fenway Park as the Red Sox broadcaster. And we made the thousand Don Arcillo heads. We snuck them in through the players' parking lot, brought them to the top of Section 10, handed them out to everyone in the section. Security tried to stop us, and we told them that uh, we were like, yeah, it's the last home game of the season, so every section is getting a free giveaway, and this is this section's giveaway. And they're like, oh, we didn't know. So then security started like clearing people out of the way so that we could deliver all, all these Don or Silo heads to the entire section 10. And then once they were handed out, we fucking sprinted out of there <laughs> and Nessa and didn't show the heads on TV, but literally the entire section was just, I have one. I, I, hold on. I'm going to grab it right now. Oh, oh my God. If you're it's watching on the YouTube channel, uh, this is what they looked like. We had like a fucking 500 of these. I forget how many exactly, but everyone in the section had one. Um, 
So we handed them out. I think this is this might be the only one left that because I, I I haven't heard from anyone that's like, hey, like I was there that day and like I have one of those. Like never, never heard from anyone that was sitting in that section. Um, Fuck! I wish that I I wish that I had known that before today's game. I would have stopped by your apartment and gotten that <laughs> and just fucking had it in the stands. <laughs> yeah, that would have been incredible. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Uh, um, Don's the best. Any final thoughts? We should do more podcasts with that, like that. <laughs> it's comforting. Just, just me and Don. Just I just, I, I don't think that that the uh, the Don situation is going to get resolved. It, it's only going to get resolved in in one of two ways. It's that the ownership is going to take so much fucking heat. That they have like no choice but to basically like beg Don Orsillo to come back and like bury the hatchet. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to sell the team and then Don's going to be like, okay, now is when I will come out and tell my side of the story. Yeah. I'll guess option number two. That's basically what Dave did with WEI. He's like, I won't have anything to do with them until everyone that I hate there is fired or has moved on. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's sort of reminiscent of the uh, like the Kevin Garnett Timberwolves saga, where the owner of the Timberwolves for some reason fucking hated Kevin Garnett and like refused to retire his number, refused to have him back, like, and then sold the team. And now they're retiring his number. Like the re- like the Celtics retired Kevin Garnett's number before the Timberwolves did, which is crazy, but also deserving. Be- best Celtic ever. Yeah, I love KG. I I even went to that. I was like, I gotta show my respect. Um, Tyler, any uh any final thoughts? Anything you want to say to Don? I love you, Don. We all love you. We'll always love you. It's true. It's very true, Peter. Kiss me, Don. <laughs> right on the mouth. Hot. Team D- Don forever. Fuck Nesson. Jake? Love you, Don. Please come back. Yeah, I think it's... <clears throat> it's going to be a long time before that's even a uh, possibility. Would you ever, if you were in his position... It's not even like the petty thing. But like, no. Would you ever leave San Diego? No. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like towards the end, he might come back because it's it's still home. It's not like he was like born in fucking Kansas, and then got a good gig with the Red Sox, and now he's with the Padres. Like this is still home, but it's just obviously San Diego is way fucking cooler. <sighs> well, um, well, rematch of the American League Division Series over the weekend. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Go Sox. And uh, we'll be back on Monday morning with Pat Light, who actually, are we going to are we gonna record here on Sunday? Jake? Yeah, if, if everyone's around, we definitely should. Do you guys want to do that? I could do that for sure. I believe so. I can as well. Okay. All right. Then you guys can come over to my house and we can... We can play podcast and um, that'll be fun. And so, yeah, definitely subscribe on the YouTube channel, subscribe on Spotify and all that shit. Because uh, if we're gonna do the show together on Sunday night, then that'll be the first time that we've we've done a podcast together as a as a cohesive unit in person. So you're you're not gonna want to miss it on the YouTube channel. Um, Don says subscribe. He's big into uh, into the YouTube content right now. So, um, all right, we'll see you Monday morning. And go socks. Boobs. Buenas noches, amigos. <laughs> <laughs>